Today we are going to talk about the books that we are going to be reading or we're going to attempt to read in the month of March. Why is my stack so bossy? Like what? This is a lot of books, but I think I think we can make it through. We are the Falco family. Brian, Serena, Cameron, Kendall, and Savannah. We're a family of five driven by purpose and fueled by love. We decided to trade in the traditional school life for a life where every day is an adventure of faith and love. From a small photography business grew a love of memory keeping and filmmaking that turned into a full blown dream of becoming a family of filmmakers exploring the truth about education. So we're learning to document our adventures in homeschool business and life and tell stories of how we live and what we learn. There is something that I've always wanted to jump in on and that is a reading challenge started by Krista at Books and Jams and Katie at Life Between Words where the goal is to pick up middle grade stories and I love middle grade books. Um, the last time I did a TBR video I, I talked about uh, the books I wanted to read then and one of them was to challenge myself or push myself to read a bit more of adult fiction and yeah that's not panning out so well. <laughs> Well, it's taken me forever and a decade to get through an adult fiction book. But nevertheless, I'm still going to push forward. But uh, what I found is that I just really love middle grade. I always have. I think I always will. And I think um, we're right in the thick of the kids getting to the middle grade phase of reading. And so I'm having all the fun, probably too much fun. I wanted to jump in and see how I fare at joining the middle grade March Madness. The first phase of our journey has been learning to uh, develop a culture of reading in our family. And the last few years, we really worked on that. And now we're moving into the right phase of our journey and then we're going to move on to the filmmaking so we are right in the midst of beginning our journey as writers as a family together which means that being on the tail end of developing or cultivating that um, environment of reading that I can share more about what we've read and what we enjoy. I'm not really big on holding us up to a standard of reading more and more and more and more books. Um, I really care about the stories inside of the books and we are big fans of rereading books, taking our time with them and uncovering all the lessons and just really enjoying them, learning about the authors, um, thinking about what they were thinking about while writing. Um, I just love everything about it and I'm gonna jump into this pretty stack and I'm very very excited okay so the first thing that we started reading in February but it's probably going to trickle its way into the beginning of our March is Green Glass House we do a lot of different reading all at the same time um, so we have individual reads that each of us kind of takes on and that's considered like our quiet reading slash individual reads we also do buddy reads um, we also have read alouds that are I guess led one led by me and one led by Brian and yeah we just kind of try to mix it up and just have as much fun cultivating and creating room to read so right now they are enjoying it um, it is a story about 12 year old Milo he is adopted and he lives in this hotel with his family it is a smugglers inn and he is on winter break um, and he is expecting a nice quiet uh, winter break when all of these people start showing up to the hotel. He meets a friend and he and this friend go on this journey of trying to role play and uh, story tell and uncover the mysteries that are inside of the inn. That's where we are right now. So, so far the kids are enjoying it. We look forward to finishing it up in the beginning of March. So the next one that I'm going to talk about is the book that they have planned um, to read together. I went ahead and reserved it from our library and it is called The Brave. Y'all know I'm a huge fan of diversity of all kind, whether it is race, whether it is family dynamic, whether it is profession inside of books for the parents or the situations. I'm just here for all of those things. This book is, I believe, by an indigenous author. Colin has a unique condition that leads him to count every letter spoken to him which makes him a prime target for bullies and frustrates his father and his dad decides to send him to live in Minnesota with 
the mother he's never met. She lives on a reservation. He quickly finds this new home of his is warm and welcoming and accepting of his condition. He meets a girl named Orenda who lives in her tree house <laughs> um, and believes she is turning into a butterfly. So he is working hard with his new friend to overcome his challenges. So this seems like a really good one about family and friendship and um, identity and I'm here for all of those things. So I'm excited to read this. Plus the cover, like the cover is beautiful. Now I'm gonna go through the challenges and let you know the books that I selected. The first challenge is a book with a silhouette on the cover. So the first one I have is Inside Out and Back Again. This is written in verse or prose. I don't know if you guys know the difference between written in verse and written in prose. Like I know the dictionary differences but I'm not quite sure. I need more examples. So if you know let me know in the comments below. I actually am not a ginormous fan of knowing exactly what these stories are about. Normally when I am skimming through books I am looking uh, for certain details and most of them have to do with diversity and complexity and differences and things like that. So I love to hear that somebody's mom is a botanist. I love to hear that someone is adopted. I love to hear that someone comes from big family or super small family or has an astronomer for a father or a football player for a father, a child that's really obsessed with butterflies. Normally elements of learning or things that you you know really spark your curiosity is stuff that I'm looking for when I read through a synopsis but other than that I try not to know too much. I do know that this is somewhat historical fiction surrounding the Vietnam War. Her family is forced to flee to America, go to Alabama. They have to deal with the coldness of its strangers, the dullness of its food, the strange shape of its landscape, and the strength of her very own family. So it's a story about one girl's year of change, dreams, grief, and healing as she journeys from one country to another, one life to the next. Cameron has really enjoyed other books from this author, so I'm excited to read this one, and it seems like it's something I can get through fairly quickly. The next one I have with a silhouette on the cover, I'm pretty sure this is silhouette E, is All the Grays on Green Street. So 12-year-old Olympia is an artist, 100% putting that in my car, and in her neighborhood that's normal. Her dad and his business partner Apollo bring antique paintings back to life while her mother makes intricate kids sculptures in a corner of their loft, leaving Ollie to roam the streets of New York with her best friends, Richard and Alex, drawing everything that catches her eye. That was enough. Like, I didn't need to know anymore. Then everything falls apart. Her dad disappears in the middle of the night, leaving her only a cryptic note and instructions to destroy it. Her mom is going to bed. She's not getting up. Apollo is hiding something. Alex is acting strange. And Richard has questions about the mysterious stranger he saw outside. And someone keeps calling, looking for a missing piece of art. So, I'm excited to, it's like mystery vibes, friendship vibes, adventure vibes, lots of art, culture, and I'm excited to read this one. The next one for a silhouette, I don't know if this is considered a silhouette or not, but it looked silhouette-y to me, and this one is I Can Make This Promise. This is another one, pretty sure this is written by an indigenous author. It's always known that she is half Native American. She knows that her mom was adopted and has no connection to her birth family. Curious to learn about her heritage, she realizes her mom doesn't have any answers. That is until the summer day when she and her friends discover a box hidden in the attic full of old photos of a woman who looks just like her and letters signed, Love, Edith. Suddenly, she has a flurry of new questions about this woman who shares her name. Could she belong to the native family that she never knew about? But if her mom and dad have kept this secret from her all her life, how can she trust them to tell her the truth now? The story of a girl grappling with her family's complicated story and figuring out how to tell her own. And I love that. I enjoy reading through complex family dynamics, being taken along on the journey of self-discovery and identity and I like for us to read stories that expose us to those differences. So next up is my stack of books with strong family elements. So this one is a graphic novel that I was really excited to find. It's called When Stars Are Scattered. It is about brothers, I'm pretty sure. Omar and his younger brother, Hassan, have spent most of their lives um, in a refugee camp in Kenya. Life is hard there, never enough food, achingly dull, and without access to the medical care that Omar's brother 
needs. He's nonverbal. When Omar has the opportunity to go to school, he knows there might be a chance to change their future, but it will also mean leaving his brother. He has a sense of family and home in the most difficult of settings. It's an unforgettable look at the day-to-day -day life of a refugee told to New York Times bestselling author Victoria Jameson by Omar Mohammed, the Somali man who lived the story and went on to help so many other refugees. I also really seem to be drawn to stories that have relationships where they're coupled with writers and I think those type of things I really um, try to make mention of or highlight with the kids because you don't have to be some prolific writer in order to get your story out and make sure that it's told so that's another thing that I'm always looking for when I look at stories um, for them to understand that there's purpose behind the thing and that relationships are important because you don't always have to be the one with that specific skill set or gifting. So next up I have Take Back the Block by Crystal D. Giles. I believe, I don't know, I think this is her debut novel. This is about Wes Henderson. He has the best style in the sixth grade playing video games. Um, is what Wes wants to be thinking about at the start of school year, not protest that his parents are always dragging him to. But when a powerful real estate developer makes an offer to buy Kensington Oaks, the neighborhood Wes has lived in his whole life, um, it changes everything. The grown-ups are supposed to have all the answers, but all they're doing is arguing. Even Wes's best friends are fighting, and some of them may be moving. Wes isn't about to give up the only home he's ever known without a fight. Um, he's always been good at puzzles, and he knows there must be a missing piece that will solve this puzzle and save the Oaks. But can he find it before it's too late? I think that, to me, reading through the synopsis made me feel like there was um, a sense of finding purpose. So I love that. I love when you have a story with a kid who is a little bit lackluster about life and not really interested in anything, would rather play games and, you know, do other things than be uh, invested in something that matters and then something in the story changes and they realize that there's a purpose behind the thing and they find that and I love stories like that so I'm excited to read this one and clearly a strong family dynamic all of these this one is by Renee Watson ways to make sunshine I'm halfway through this books I've already tabbed it up <laughs> I think the hardest the, the biggest reason why it takes me so long to get through books is because I get stuck I just get stuck on paragraphs and sentences and pages because I'm thinking about all the things. It's very hard for me to just read through a story and keep it moving. I'm normally thinking about what the author was thinking, imagining why they chose to write it a certain way, why it means so much to me, how it would apply to each of my kids if they read it in different voices or different ways. I'm just doing the most. So um, I've enjoyed tabbing through this book. I was a big reader as a child, but I never read stories that had characters that looked like me. And I know that it is important in general, but it wasn't until I picked this book up that I realized how fun it would have been to read something like this at that age. I just uh, um, clearly overarchingly clear that representation is important but I think in reading this particular story I just didn't realize what I might have been missing um, so I think I tabbed through this book for the writing of course I tabbed for um, lessons that I loved I tabbed for character um, things that I enjoyed and then I also tabbed my blue tabs are all the love to see it this is us book so this is kind of like Ramona Quimby type vibes um, and I love that there are just diverse stories of diverse characters just living life it's not historical fiction a regular story about you living regular life and that has just been really sweet for me to read through I don't necessarily think that this book is going to have that same type of effect on my kids or Savannah in particular because she has been exposed to nothing but diverse characters since she was born and that's wonderful um, but it's been really nice for me to read through so far I also don't reserve books like this just for my little girl this is something that my oldest and my middle son can both read. I don't like to set stories as just boy stories or girl stories. I think stories are beautiful in all of the shapes and sizes and ways they're told and all of that jazz. So um, ways to make sunshine. I'm halfway through and I'm excited to read the rest of it and see how um, it ends. That was long but this one's just really cute and really fun to pick up. Next up I have Brothers 
Keeper. First of all, this cover is gorgeous, okay? <laughs> this one is set in North Korea, 1950. 12-year-old Sora and her family live under an iron set of rules, no travel without a permit, no criticism of the government, no absences from communist meetings, repeat slogans, don't trust your neighbors, don't speak your mind, you are being watched. Um, there's no hope for escape until war breaks out between North and South Korea. Suddenly there is chaos and everyone is fleeing. They plan to get to freedom and it's very simple. They will walk hundreds of miles from their tiny mountain village, but when a bombing changes everything, Sora must get herself and her eight-year-old brother to South Korea alone, across rivers, over mountains, around enemy soldiers and border guards, all while keeping away from frostbite and starvation. Can two children survive 300 miles of war zone in winter? I mean, I think that's enough said. <laughs> Ginormous family element. Um, another one of those things that exposes them to uh, circumstances and places that they aren't familiar with. So I'm very excited to read this one. All I could think while reading the synopsis was 100% movie. <laughs> like, I could see myself 100% caught up in the movie version of this book. So Y'all know that historical fiction is the best because it gives us a story to follow that they can then ask questions and then we can write those questions down and follow rabbit holes to figure out, to ask all the things about different wars and different countries and different conflicts and different challenges and changes and all of those things. So that's really big to me. So next up for a book featuring travel and adventure, I have this one. I've been wanting to read this one for a long time. First of all, can we talk about this cover for a second? I am 100% one of those who judges a book by its cover. <laughs> I think a lot of us do, so I don't feel so bad, but I'm trying to get better. This is another one of those books that I'm pretty sure is told in verse or prose. I don't know which one somebody's gonna tell me. I'm learning how to be sad and happy at the same time. Pretty much bought it off that, <laughs> okay? Oh my gosh, like certain lessons inside of stories are big for me. Um, if, especially if I feel like it uncovers a lesson that isn't often talked about, um, something that is against the norm, something that is more like free thinking vibes, critical thinking vibes, um, it's really big for me. So I literally, off of that description alone, was like, I'm getting this book. Well, the description and the cover. Jude never thought she'd be leaving her beloved older brother and father behind all the way across the ocean in Syria. But when things in her hometown start becoming volatile, Jude and her mother are sent to live in Cincinnati with relatives. At first, everything in America seems too fast and too loud. The American movies she's always loved haven't quite prepared her for starting school in the U.S. And her new label of Middle Eastern and identity she's never known before. But this life also brings unexpected surprises. There are new friends, a whole new family, and a school musical that she just might try out for. Maybe America too is a place where Jude can be seen as she really is. This lyrical life affirming story is about losing and finding home and most important finding yourself. I love every bit of that. I like the musical vibes in here. Obviously, I love the own voices perspective, so I am so excited to read this one. I think this will also be a quick read for me, and I can't wait. Okay, so that one definitely is Travel Vibes. This one also, which I want to tell you about this. You guys, y'all know that I'm not the best at jumping into all the things. I had a friend named Carrie who reached out to us saying that she enjoyed our videos and she wanted to find a way to give back to us for what we were putting out here on the internet and she reached out and asked if we had a wish list an Amazon wish list which y'all know I do I keep track of all the books that I want to get or keep my eye on or even in order to keep track of them for getting them from the library but I just thought it was really special to me that you would think to go a bit further and ask and then actually follow through so that was really a ginormous blessing and I was way too happy to receive the packet so thank you so much Carrie. She actually got us three books um, but only two of them are in this stack. 
So I'll show you these two. But Carrie, thank you so, so, so very much. It was such a blessing to me and really helped to encourage me on a day that I was really pretty like spent. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. So one of the books that she got, and I will 100% include this in um, a reading vlog so you can see me read through it and see what I think about it. But this one is Midsummer's Mayhem. This book is First of all, it's beautiful. Like, this book is gorgeous, okay? Um, this is about 11-year-old Mimi, and she comes from a big Indian-American family. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> so anytime I see any type of diversity, I am putting those flags up and knowing that I am 100% interested. And I'm pretty sure this is own voices as well. Yes, because this author was born in India and raised in Kentucky. So Mimi comes from a big Indian American family, the youngest of four. She feels invisible, but her dream of proving herself seems possible when she enters a contest at the brand new bakery in town. But when Mimi's dad, a renowned food writer, another flag <laughs> okay another flag um a renowned food writer mysteriously loses his highly honed sense of taste she worries she'll never be able to bake something impressive enough to propel her to gastronomic fame as she struggles with what to make mimi is drawn into the woods behind her house where she meets vic a boy who shows her parts of the forest she's never seen who knew that there were banyan trees and wild boars in Massachusetts? Together, they discover exotic ingredients and bake them into delectable and enchanting treats. So, I love that. I love it. Um, there's also, but as her dad acts stranger every day and her siblings' romantic entanglements start causing trouble, Mimi begins to wonder whether the ingredients she and Vic found are somehow behind it all. I loved this so much. So another element that I was really intriguing to me was the romantic entanglement. Um, because we're getting into that middle grade phase where we're starting to talk um, more about romantic attraction, I'm very excited to jump into that and really kind of support and guide them as they start to change and they start to grow. So I'm excited to see what this story has to offer and how we can use it as a way to like not shape but just uplift and support and really enjoy the different stages of growing in in life. And then also that just seemed really magical, like what is going on with these ingredients and what is happening here. Very excited to read this one. I think I'm excited to read every one of them, but <laughs> you know what I mean. The next one I have was also from Carrie, so thank you so, so very much again and again. Um, but this one is The Language of Spells. The next challenge said, a fairy tale retelling or has fairy tale elements. So I couldn't really think of a fairy tale retelling that I wanted to read right now, um, but this one definitely has fairy tale elements. Um, so The Language of Spells. Sometimes, even today, magic still happens. Sold. <laughs> like I was sold. So magic is really an interesting thing that I wrap my mind around when it comes to stories and storytelling and learning. There's so many magical elements that I enjoy because I think magical elements really help to keep imagination alive. So I'm always looking for that and there's always a balance um, between dark and light and magic and that's the whole thing for me which I could talk about at a different time, but I'm always looking for magical um, elements that seem very realistic, if that makes any sense. So, but this one's definitely not realistic. <laughs> this, one, this one's not realistic feeling. This is more on the magical, magical, magical um, side. But anyway, Grisha is a dragon in a world that's forgotten how to see him. Maggie is an unusual child, but thinks she is ordinary. They're an unlikely duo, but magic often makes unlikely friendships again sold right there um if you pay attention you'll understand why magic has chosen you and now magic has chosen grisha and maggie to solve the darkest mystery in vienna decades ago it was decided that there were too many dragons as grisha and maggie navigate the inner bureaucracies of the department of extinct exotics negotiate with talking cats and evade a dangerous magician the two friends ask the question everyone's forgotten where have the missing dragons gone and is there a way to save them i love this <laughs> 
think that sounds so amazing and I'm excited to see how it pans out. Um, my oldest is very much so a historical fiction, realistic fiction type of guy. Um, so normally when he gets these type of magical stories, they need to be read aloud. So I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, I do have the audiobook for this one. So that might be an option for me to get through it before they get to it. But this one has really beautiful illustrations inside, which I'm such a fan. I am such a fan of keeping the illustrations alive for as long as possible. So whenever I see this, I'm just like, who are you? We need more from you. I mean, these, even, the, even with them being black and white illustrations, I just think they're gorgeous and I love to see it. So I'm very excited about reading this one, The Language of Spells. The last challenge is reading a book that was published the decade you were born. So I'm an 80s baby and you know, <laughs> you know I had to pick Matilda. Um, we were already actually had this one on our TBR for February, um, in particular for a buddy read with Savannah. Um, and she just kept like bumping other books up that she wanted to read. So we hadn't quite gotten to this one yet. I love this copy of Matilda. It's another illustrated edition and it's gorgeous. Like it's so, so, so gorgeous. Um, so I am all for illustrated copies of books. I just don't know why they take the illustrations out of stories so quickly um, it makes me sad but anyway when I see this copy these copies I love them so much I actually could not find this copy in the store I look um, but I did find this one at the library and I just keep having to check it out and check it out because I don't want to give it back <laughs> But anyway, of course, you know the story of Matilda. It is about a girl. Let's read the synapses because I know what it's about, but let's read what it says. Matilda is a sweet, exceptional young girl, but her parents think she's just a nuisance. She expects school to be different, but there she has to face Miss Trunchbull, a kid hating terror of a headmistress. When Matilda is attacked by the Trunchbull, she suddenly discovers she has a remarkable power with which to fight back. It will take superhuman genius to give Miss Trunchbull what she deserves. And Matilda may be just the one to do it. Oh, I, I've never read that before. So basically, Matilda is born into a family where they do not appreciate um, her liking to all things learning and reading. And uh, she ends up, and they're neglectful. Um, she ends up being really looking forward to going to school. She's sent off to this school um, where the headmaster, Miss Trunchbull, is just a whole hot mess. Y'all like my synapses? <laughs> So Ms. Trunchbull is a whole hot mess and believes that children need to be in their places. And um, one thing they don't mention in the synapses is there's a teacher that she encounters and her name is Miss Honey. And you guys know if you've been around for any amount of time, I often equate my teaching style to very much so Mary Poppins meets Miss Honey, uh, which is so funny because at some point during our homeschool journey, the kids have associated me with them without me having said it. Um, and I love that so much. So so anyway, I'm excited to read through this with Savannah. She has watched the movie, but she's never read the full book. So I'm excited to read this one with her. And I made it through, you guys. Okay. Y'all, why is my stack so bossy? Like what? This is a lot of books, but I think I think we can make it. I think we can make it through. So I'm very excited to be a part of Middle Grade March with all the middle grade lovers. I just want to say thank you again to our patron fam who has sponsoring this video we love you guys so very much let me know do you enjoy reading middle grade if so then why if not tell us why let me know what is on your tbr have you read any of these did you enjoy any of these let me know all the things remember that life is so very full of lessons i probably used my hands so much through this video i'm so sorry <laughs> life is so very full of lessons and our goal as always is to live and to learn bye don't, Don't forget, forget to subscribe! subscribe.